an individual emailed me the other day and um, they have a situation like this two by six ceiling joist and the ceiling joist uh, I believe he said were about 16 foot and they were sagging uh, two by six usually I think to span 16 foot you need at least a two by eight um, you might need a two by ten but I think the individual is going to replace it with 2 by 10 and he was wondering how in the heck you would do it. Now the first thing I want to do is provide you with an example of what this type of framing would look like. A 2 by 4 plate on top of your ceiling joist. And you can see here if you were to replace it with a 2 by 10 you'd have a difficult time. You could slide another 2 by 6 in there, double it up, but that might not do you any good. So again, the standard double top plates. And I've seen this before where they have one top plate on top of it here. The ceiling joist directly over the wall framing studs and then a plate on top of that also. And a view from the top there. So you should have a pretty good idea what's going on here. And uh, now let's go ahead and take a look at what we might need to put the larger ceiling joist in and remove the smaller ones. Now remember, I am not a structural engineer. I am just providing you with an opinion of something that might work. So you are on your own whether or not you choose to do something like this. So Here's what I think I would do. I would support the roof rafters, and I think you could do this in sections. Support the ceiling joist, roof rafters, whatever you need to support by building some walls underneath them or uh, having an, an individual 2x4 or 4x4 underneath each one of the rafters. And just I think you could do it in sections, maybe do uh, two or three at a two or three of the ceiling joists at a time, something like that. Now you might need to remove the outside of the um, wall finish. For example, if you have stucco or siding, you might need to remove the top section of it. Otherwise, you're going to have a difficult time getting the joists in and uh, nailing it and uh, um, putting all doing attaching everything could be difficult also depending upon um, what you're working with that'd be another thing to consider so here's some, my first idea you will remove the ceiling joist and you'll remove the framing plate that the rafters are sitting on top of and again you could do it in sections just cut out a section cut out the section on the other side um, and go from there and you'll simply add some blocks so here's one method where you're going to add one block and uh, you can cut these I think this is a seven inch wide block you can double them up you're going to need something underneath a rafter. And I just kind of left this out there. You know, will one block do or two blocks? I will leave that up to you. And it'd be a good idea to nail the joist every four foot on center if you're dealing with 16 inch on center lumber. Or you could nail it to every rafter if your rafters are spaced 24 inches on center for the ceiling joist. And of course, if your rafters are 16 inches on center, then make sure you put a joist right next to each rafter. So here's kind of panned out here. Double blocks. I, I would like the idea of double blocks better than a single block. Um, engineer might uh, like that too. And if you have a difficult time nailing the rafters and the ceiling joist together, nailing them to the blocks, then you could always use some type of hardware to uh, nail it and uh, you know you might actually need to nail something like this to the blocks and then put the blocks in there um, while you're while you're working on your project it's difficult to you know I can't just put my brain into your your uh, body and have everything go smoothly but a lot of stuff is pre-planning, thinking of stuff. So when you're doing this in sections and you see something that doesn't work, you can try to correct it, you know, instead of just putting all the blocks in and then nailing all the, all the hardware on. If you're doing one or two blocks at a time and you can't get the, 
um, hardware on the first block, well, you know that you can uh, make the correction and put it on the second block you install, if that makes sense. A view from the bottom, again, the new ceiling joist sitting on top of the framing plates. Another view there. Now, here's probably what I would do instead of the double blocks, I would use a four by. So if I needed a seven inch block, I would get a four by eight and rip it down and uh, get over there. And I like this method better. And the reason for that is because I'll be able to add some straps to it a little easier. Another thing you might need to do would be to put some type of blocks in here and uh, of course shape the top of the block if possible. And I realize you won't be nailing the sheathing through the blocks because the roofing's in the way. But uh, if you ever go to re-roof the house, you could nail it then would be my thinking on this. So whether or not you shape the top of the block, I will leave that up to you. And uh, But these blocks, of course, will be nice for the rafters. And, of course, you can toenail everything, in-nail everything together here. Or you can use building hardware to make the connections. And I kind of like the idea of putting the strap on here. You're going to have the ceiling joist uh, connected to the blocks. And then you're going to connect these blocks to your roof rafters. So if you tie something like this... You put some uh, framing anchors here and some straps to connect to the studs and the plates and the block here, then I think you're going to get a nice connection and uh, do it on the other side. Now, you don't need to put this on every stud. Uh, four foot on center should do just fine. And uh, if you can keep them close to the... Um, rafters that are going to tie to the ceiling joist then I think you're going to be even better off but either way you're going to have a if you can have a strap that's going to, to connect the block the roof rafter block to the ceiling joist or the block that's going to be supporting the rafters and the framing plates I think you're going to get a nice connection so even if you just did this put this one strap on I think you're going to be um, in pretty good shape as long as they are not spaced any further apart than 48 inches on center. They can be 16 inches on center, 32 inches on center, 48 inches on center, but they cannot be 50 inches on center. So I hope that makes sense. And I hope this gives you an idea on how you can repair something like this. Again, I can't stress this enough. These are just suggestions, things that I think will work, things that I think might work. They might work in certain cases. They might not work in other cases. And as always, I am not a structural engineer. If you are going to do something like this and you're concerned about, uh, you think that this right here might not work, get contact an engineer. And, uh, and again, I'm not telling everyone out there, do not get me wrong. I'm not telling you that an engineer is going to solve all your problems. But I am telling you that if you do not know much about construction, then you might be better off contacting a professional, an engineer or a contractor, somebody who does and can get you going in the right direction.